made your own ego, that's called the ego, yeah. the arbitrator. But, but one moment, you, you one moment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. God is, sorry, yeah, I, I thought you were going to let me sorry, speak yeah. now. Yeah? If we make our own ego the arbitrator of the truth of the reality, I think God is going to put me in heaven because whatever I think is right, whatever I think is true. So I think, you know what? I feel killing white people is okay because I'm a racist person. Um, I feel good by doing that. And God's going to put me into paradise by killing these people. And then I end up in heaven and God say, yeah, there you go, you did that. Do you really think in the day of judgment, imagine I did that, this is how I felt. Killing the people, killing Jewish people. Imagine I was Hitler and I killed all these Jewish people. And, and in the day of judgment, I'm saying, where is the door to heaven? Why am I in the hellfire, near in the gates of hellfire? And God says, why you kill those people unjustly? He says, no, but I thought this was a good thing to do. In my heart, in my conscience, that was a good thing to do. I thought this was a rewarding thing to do. I should be put to, put inside heaven for that. Do you think God will say, yeah, you know, I'll let you go into heaven, just like that? You need to really rethink the criteria that you use to determine the source and the basis of truth. You're saying your conscience, your ego, essentially, is the arbitrator of the truth. That I don't think God will put me into hellfire because I followed everything else. That you think. But if God says, look, I send prophets and messengers telling you, informing you again and again and again and again that follow the straight path that leads to God, which is follow the prophets and messengers. Whenever prophet and messenger comes, the last messengers come, follow him. Follow his teachings. That is the straight path. And instead, you follow that path. You follow the, you know, this path, and you follow that path. Yeah, yeah. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he drew, he drew a line in the sun, a straight line, and then he drew several other lines, bendy lines, crooked lines, going all the way. He says, this is the straight line that goes to heaven, it takes you to God's pleasure. And all the other lines are going to take you to hellfire. All the other parts, okay? There is like an evil one waiting in each one, calling you on this one. So there are no this idea. Sounds like very, you know, interesting, like God sort of the world, he sent his only begotten son. These kind of things. God loves everyone. It doesn't matter. You can follow any path. Every path leads to God. This is another of this message that people misunderstand. That you can follow any path and that will lead to God. No, God says. God has always sent prophets and messengers for them to be followed. Because the will of God that you are supposed to surrender is known and expressed through the prophets and messengers, his will. God's will is expressed through prophets and messengers in their teaching in the scripture. God says, don't do this, do this. If you come along and say, my heart, my conscience tells me, people's heart and conscience changes. Now, do you know homo, calling someone a bad thing about a homosexual person is a crime elsewhere before it was like, how can you be doing like that? crime punishable by death so people some people's their hearts are like this how can you be so mean and rude to a homosexual individual it's changed the perception totally if someone considers now homosexuality is actually a despicable sin they will say how can you you don't have a good heart and good conscience you see things how change because the society can change and mold your perception of the things and behaviors and attitudes god <coughs> sends what is acceptable and what is not and that is why it is essential for us to follow the guidance from god and if we were at the time of the prophets and messengers before it was obligatory on us to follow them because now islam through prophet muhammad islam is last it's obligatory on us to follow the last prophet muhammad wasallam, for the last book the quran if you disagree i mean i just leave it there so it's been a um, pleasure speaking to you and i, I apologize you no you you say no no you say you no no you say what you have to say you answer what you have to say but i'm saying we're going to wrap this up i appreciate can i answer the question you asked i am saying you will I will give you the opportunity, but I'm just saying it's a pleasure speaking to you. I've learned something in how you know your particular thought process are. We may disagree with each other. Ultimately, do you agree we are all trying to go to heaven and avoid the punishment of God? Okay.
Let's leave it to that. No, no, so no, now no, you can I, answer. You asked me. Do you, That's what do, I'm saying. Do I believe? Your turn. It's your chance no, to you speak. Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, let me speak. So you asked me, do I think Hitler would go to heaven? You know, he, he believed he was doing the. He was following his conscience, or what he believed was the right thing by killing all the Jews. And you asked me whether I think that you know he would go to heaven. And of course, I don't think he would go to heaven. But let me ask you this: so you know, if if someone, if you love someone, you know. And you have a good relationship with them. How do you know that you have a good relationship with them? You have a positive feeling towards the person, right? So it's like a love, right? It's like a and it's like a affection that you have towards this person and it feels like positive. It doesn't feel dark or evil or negative, right? Because you know that it's a it's a positive like it's like it's love, right? It's like between your yourself like your relationship with your mother for example. You know, there's like a loving relationship there. So you would never think, oh, um, maybe this relationship, it's, uh, it's just, maybe it's not really good. Maybe it's just my, my ego is thinking that it's good because, uh, you know, I, I could be, I could be, this could really be an evil relationship, but, you know. So what I'm saying is that <coughs> through having a relationship with God, you know, not necessarily based on what any one scripture says, you can have this, you can develop a, positive relationship with God, outside of religion, you can develop an affection towards God, and I feel like he reciprocates to religion. Which God? God has a son or God which is a No, the, also, the Supreme Creator. Does the Supreme Creator have a son or does he have another son? No, no I, don't, I don't know. I don't it's important for us to know, because when you know. say you can follow any religion, so now some ask religions God. say... Uh, ask God. I, I did, know. and God said he doesn't have a son. So okay. now which one are you going to follow? The one which says God has a son? What, or the just, one which says God doesn't? There's just two? No, I'm just giving you two examples. Well, there's not two examples, look, look, many religions. When God has a son or not, there's only two options. He either has a son or doesn't have a son. Really? I thought there was many religions. So, in terms of having a son, what, how many options do you have? God has a son, God doesn't have a son. Is there a third? Uh, well, why is, why is, why, what's this, I don't understand, why, why are you bringing I just gave you a concept of God, in which God has children. So either God has children, or God doesn't have children. Do you have a third option? No. Good. Within these two options, which is the truth? I don't know. Right. So do you want to know? No, what? Whether he, no, I don't really care. Okay, fine. It doesn't, it doesn't That's why I'm saying, you no, know, this listen, discussion is coming why. to No, I'll explain why. Because it doesn't affect my relationship with God. It's just a detail that's from some religion. If you tell me he has a son, what difference does it make to me? If you tell me he doesn't have a son, what difference does it make to me? Shall I tell you something? None whatsoever. It doesn't affect how I feel. Fine, it may not affect you, right? So. But the one who we ascribe falsehood to, what if this God, the Supreme Almighty, doesn't appreciate people ascribing partners to him, partners. calling him a rat, calling him a dog, calling him a pig, calling him a man? What if he doesn't like that? He what? says, what if he doesn't one, like one, one uh, moment, one moment, killing one moment. animals for... Sorry, one, one, for, uh, our own <laughs> one moment, yeah, remember, one moment, well. remember what you said. It doesn't affect you, it may not affect you. But what if the God that you believe in yeah. doesn't appreciate that someone calls him a rat or a half elephant, half man God, or calls him a man, or that you can kill him, or he has a son or a daughter? What if he doesn't appreciate? Do you think He's going to be happy with you? I'll ask the same question to you. I don't know the answer. I'm going to I, want to remember, I, I you said you don't care. No. In, this, in this belief system, when you don't care, and you go in the day of judgment, when you're saying, God should be happy with me, because no. I didn't care whether he was a rat or not. The thing is, I don't have any conceptions like that in my mind about God. So how can I offend God? I just have a relationship. No, no, you and so, someone else like you says, I think God is a rat. Like, what do you mean? No, no one else like uh, me. Wait, 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 wait. I've never met you have a concept in which God has no con like this. Imagine someone takes your teaching and says, I have a concept of God. God is a rat. No, that's not my. A teaching. mouse. No, sorry, that's not my. Sorry, teaching. sorry. Your teaching is whatever you believe from your conscience. Think about who God is, what God is. It's okay as long as you take the positive vibe from it. It's okay. Someone takes a positive vibe, this feeling that God is a rat because they love rats so much. He says, God is a rat. We should worship rats. And then they end up in the day of judgment and saying, I should be, God should be happy with me because I called him a rat and he was a rat. Seriously, we need to start rethinking the way we think I'll ask about you this God. Question. 
if someone has, if someone believes a rat is saying they have a pet rat and they believe that this rat is God, like an incarnation of God, and they have such a devotional relationship to this rat that's a pet rat, so much so that they genuinely worship it every day, they, you know, they, they worship it, like they bow to it every day as if it's God. Do you think that God would not be merciful to this person and, and give them salvation over the, the fake religious person who goes to the mosque five times a day and prays but doesn't really have any love for God in the heart? Do you think, do you think God will not be merciful on this, on this person who, who loves God to the, you know, is even God though just? they're confused? Is God just? Yes. Yeah? Good. If you believe God is just, is he going to treat the good and the wicked the same? No. Has he defined what is good and what is wicked, what is bad? I don't know. Uh, in, in, terms of, in terms of like general things, we should inquire from our conscience what's appropriate according to time and circumstances. God left people wondering, knowing what is good and what is bad and expects people to follow the good by their own conscience. Who can then disagree what is good and what is bad? In many scriptures, in all religions... Hitler so, might think no, no, killing me, the Jewish people is good. Wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in every single religion, there are, there are certain exceptions to every rule. No? Is this do you true? think, yeah, do you think killing the Jewish people by Hitler is a good thing? No. What if Hitler thought it was good? And he expects reward from God. And what if God, like you believe God is just, considers this is evil and God punishes him, but he thought he was good? But he's not a religious person anyway. So. I'm giving you an example from history. A man that has committed this kind of atrocity, you can use as an example. This is a prime example of what is good and what is bad. Hitler thinks this is good. Kill them all, wipe them off the face of the earth. That's his particular ideology, right? So he should be rewarded for it. God should be happy with him. But you're saying no. He will end up being punished. But he thought he would end up being rewarded. So think about yourself. So the gambling, the gambling that you're playing, that you think whatever I do, whatever I follow, I am expecting a reward from God and God will be happy with me. When you know from examples elsewhere, it may be the opposite. Whatever you believe, like whatever Hitler. you have an ideological standpoint, it may be and God's displeasure and his anger and his wrath. And you can then not then ex have an excuse, I didn't know God, he didn't tell me. God tells you, us, in his last revelation, you will not have an excuse. One of the reasons, let me tell you, the prophet and Muslims came. They came as warners and good giving people good tidings. They are the ones who are the warner, warn of the consequence that await if you do these things, and they give glad tidings of the things that await for you in, in good pleasure and, and happiness and joy and tranquility and bliss if you do follow, and they also show you how to do that. They also become what we call a reason where your excuse will be no longer acceptable. They will remove the excuses saying, I didn't know, you didn't tell me, I was not aware. So when you end up knowing that God sent prophets and messenger, he sent the Quran, he sent the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he sent you this guidance, he told you do's and don'ts, and you end up in, in the day of judgment saying, I didn't care, are you be able to justify but how Your do you know that? Then? Where's the proof that that if happened? If that was the case, do you think you have sufficient reasons to have an excuse? You don't even have an excuse well, in front of me, let alone where, where's the, the most that Islam is from God. God knows our heart, so he knows where the That's why he gave the guidance. That's why he sent prophets and messengers, because he knows our heart. Yes. Our hearts can be corrupted, yes. and it's corruptible. Yes. He sends guidance, infallible guidance the prophets and messengers for that guidance. Do's and don'ts. What's so the what? proof Islam is from God? Why, why are there we so talked many, about it already. You're too late so and I'm not in interested in telling you. Why are there so many religions that believe that they are from God? These religions they, 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 that is now we God. see originally they're all from God, teaching from God. God sent Islam, the 
pure submission and surrender to all nations. Not a nation has passed, God tells us, that he does send an owner to them. But what has happened throughout history is people started corrupting it, adulterating it, tampering it, going away the, from the message. And what is left with some remnants of the truth with falsehood added to it. And that is the reason why sometimes a particular nation has more than one prophet and a messenger. So how do remind you know it, remind them the back again of the message that was sent before. Islam, how do you know this hasn't happened in the years of Islam? That is why you have to examine the Quran. That is the point we're making. The Quran has been preserved and the Quran has already said you cannot imitate it. So one can have assurance that this book cannot be other than from God and this book is exactly what the Prophet taught and, 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 and he preached and he, he gave guidance from, then we can say yes, I am following the guidance that God gave in the last of his guidance through this Prophet and Messenger Muhammad We can then be assured. That's how the tranquility in the heart comes. The conviction and the certainty comes from that knowledge. And this is why when we surrender to Allah, to, in Islam, do you know it's actually quite interesting way. We don't say we believe and we disbelieve. We say La ilaha illallah. There are nothing worthy of worship. No deity, no God worthy of worship except the one and only Allah. So we start by what? Rejecting everything of the creation. Rejecting everything that is not worthy of worship. All of the things that people come across, man, woman, tree, flag, tripods, your glasses, everything, nothing is worthy of worship. Except, except the one who is the creator of all things. But he, these are his creations, aren't they, aren't they hold, like, auspicious, yeah. like, isn't it uh, holy? Yeah. So isn't the creation holy? Because it's God's creation, no? No, creation is not worthy of worship. The creator is. The one who is the giver of life, God is worthy of worship. Say, the uh, one who guides and nourishes and sustains and protects and maintains the universe is worthy of worship. Not that tripod which human beings transform from other materials that God he created. Does, he does it through the creation, right? through the trees that give us oxygen, you know, through the sun, the gives us oxygen, things like that. So. Yeah, so the one who gave that tree for your sustenance is the one worthy of worship, not the tree. No, we don't. We do not respect the tree as well. Of course you do, but respect and worship is two different things. Worship is giving all the right and the glory and the honor and the respect, everything. All of your heart's content, your love, that's worship. But if you give that to a football star or a pop star or a musician or a dancer, then you have committed what we call an unjust act against God. Because God is the one who is the worthy of worship. Imagine you work for a company, my last example. You work for a company and the company that employed you expects you to do their work, come to work on time, yeah, rather than late every day, do the job you're supposed to do based on your job description. If you want to do more, that's good, it's a bonus, but at least do what you're supposed to do, what you've been contracted to do. And at the end of the day, they have guaranteed or promised or made a contract, they will give you the wages and the salary. Now imagine. You've been hired by that company, but you do the works of the rival company or someone else. Do their works, everything else, everything that goes against this company's interest. And at the end, you expect a wages and a salary from this company that has appointed you when you do someone else's job. Even in this world, you would not do that. You would say, why am I expecting this salary? When, I did, should... when did God show us the yeah? contract to so sign? If God created you, and you know that God created you, no one else did. And yet, instead of worshipping God, you worship someone else. Don't expect God to reward you with heaven. The thing is, well, do you agree that in most religions they believe in that, that God has um, the same attributes? So like, God is um, omnipotent, uh, <coughs> uh, omnipresent, like he exists in all hearts. No? So I said, you don't believe that God exists? God. He doesn't exist inside your heart? Or your oh. When this universe was not here, where was God? In uh, his eternal abode. Right. So when God created the universe, where did he create it? 
wherever he goes. I don't know. In him? I, I don't know. So there are beliefs like that. There are pantheistic beliefs and other beliefs and beliefs that God created within himself. Some, we believe God created the creation external to him. Creation is not part of God. Yeah? So those people who believe God is everywhere means what? The creation is inside him. God created inside him. What does it make? Does it make sense? God creates inside him? He's already everywhere. How do you create something inside him already when he's everywhere? Anyway, so no, that's what I'm that. saying. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So but let's move on to another attribute of God. So, so he might not be everywhere, but um, he's all powerful, right? So, and also, you know, I don't think does he know everything? Or would you say he knows all knowledge. So he knows everything. He knows what's going on in this world, right? Yeah. yeah. For me, so, I believe in it. So at least those two, um, like most religions agree, right? That he has those attributes. He's uh, all powerful and all knowledgeable, right? So, so in my, in my philosophy, what I have to say is that because he has all knowledge and all power, he knows what's in our heart. He knows, he knows if we're good or bad. So, and if you, if you um, <coughs> study. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> If you study the fundamentals of all uh, religions, you'll, you'll, if you study the fundamentals of all religions, you'll learn those, those rules about right? God. You know, these are the aspects that seem to be universal and it's not religion. Right? That's what remains of the truth from God, as I said. So these all are, religion was initially Islam. So the attributes of God are the same as most religions, right? Not necessarily, but there are a lot of similarities still remain. Sorry. What I would say is that if you understand, if you study religion to that extent and you understand the qualities of God, you know, to a fair degree, um, I think through that you can develop a relationship with God. And, and through knowing that He is all powerful and all knowledgeable, you'll understand that He knows what's in your heart. And so if you know that He knows what's in your heart, you'll try to not upset Him because He knows what you are doing all the time, He knows what you're thinking. And if you want to maintain a good relationship with God, you wouldn't want to upset God because He is your, you know, your, your creator, your father. You know, like, like I said about your relationship with your mother. So for me, this is what uh, God ultimately is. What if your true religion is? Anyway. So, Even if God communicated to us, communicated to us in the past, you got some messages. Uh, and you said earlier. Yeah, of course, you God communicates to right. so people all the time. Okay. What did he say who you should worship? Him. Him alone or with partners? Um, him alone. Yeah. That's what Islam says. Worship God alone. Right, that's yeah, but if you now worship from another concept somewhere else, why do you need to go when God already sent clarifications of the errors and mistakes that are corrupt in, in his religion that he provided for people? God knows what's in your heart. So you that's why he gave the last message with clarification. That people's heart needs to come clean. And God says, this is how I said earlier, successful are the ones who have purified their heart. That means their heart needs purification. Coming back to what I said, jihad al nafs, the, the purification of the soul, <coughs> the struggle of the soul. You purify yourself. Islam, with this last message, does that. At least try to come with this mind and approach the Quran. What was your name? Felix. Felix, a pleasure speaking to you. If I've offended you in any way or shape, I do apologize. And I didn't mean to say something like this, but this is how I feel. I don't, I'm not able to entertain a conversation with you. But That's there's no, no, nothing personal. About ideas. Because we have, no, we have spoken in the past, and I've come to a point where it's like a brick wall. Basically, he says things, and I know when he's not telling things. Other.